As we continue to consider the shape of coexistence curves between different phases in a phase diagram, uh, we'll return to the Clapeyron equation, which we saw was given by the following expression. It's equal to delta, and uh, I think we used before for vaporization, it looked something like this, where um, the volume change for vaporization for the for the molar volume of this is could be pretty much set equal to the molar volume of the vapor itself. We could ignore the more condensed phase, um, and uh, that led us to the Clausius-Clapeyron equation. I, I, I should say something to clarify this a little bit. This um, this quantity here, dp dt, is basically a slope, and since it was derived at a phase equilibrium point, it is the slope of a coexistence curve. And I probably wasn't clear in my earlier uh, video. But that's why we care about this equation, because we want to figure out what the slope is of those uh, various coexistence curves and figure them out. Now, just as the, Claus the Clapeyron equation uh, works for vaporization, although not as quite as well as the Clausius-Clapeyron equation, it works great also for the uh, the transition from solid to liquid. So I want to focus on that one in this uh, particular video. So now we're talking about the fusion, the ch uh, change of enthal molar enthalpy for fusion divided by T and the change of molar volume for fusion. Now the change of molar volume for fusion is now going to be the difference in the molar volume of a liquid and the molar volume of a solid. And we've marked a few other times that these are in fact actually usually pretty close to one another. Usually the, vic the liquid is larger than the solid, although not always. And this is going to play a role in what we have to say in this particular, uh, in this particular video. So um, what we want to do is have a look at these things and determine uh, which one is going to be larger. Most of the time we have the situation where the liquid molar volume is larger than the solid molar volume. So when we do that, that means that this is a positive quantity here in the, denom in the denominator. The uh, enthalpy of fusion, if we're going from solid to liquid, is always a positive number, so this is greater than zero. So if this is true, then delta V fusion is greater than zero. So that means we're going to have a positive slope when we look at the coexistence curve between solid and liquid. Now I'm going to, just going to draw a quick phase diagram here. Um, here's the triple point. We're going to go up to the critical point. And now for the uh, solid liquid, if it's got a if it's got a positive slope, and I've exaggerated it here, if it has a positive slope, then it's going to be leaning to the right. Okay, so it's going to look something like that. All right. The other possibility is that we have the molar volume of the solid is greater than the molar volume of the liquid. Okay, this is a more unusual case, but uh, as I've mentioned a couple of times, this is actually what happens in water. So in this case, we're going to have that the change for fusion of the molar volume is going to be less than zero. So now when I draw my phase diagram, and again, we'll do this in a rather brusque, quick way. Um, now when I draw the solid-liquid coexistence curve, it's not going to have a positive slope. It's going to have a negative slope. So this one had positive slope, and this one had negative slope. All right, well, does this make any difference? Well, I want to show you one uh, way in which it actually makes a very practical difference. And that's, I'm going to home in on the region, uh, let's start over here. I'm going to home in on a region that this coexistence curve runs between. So let me draw that here. So I've got the coexistence curve running through this region. It's got a positive slope. And I'm going to say, for example, that I have um, liquid over here and solid over here. And now let's say I'm starting at a point that's down here. And I 
increase the pressure. Well, increasing the pressure and keeping the temperature constant means moving vertically up in this diagram. So in this particular case, if I increase the pressure, this will cause my liquid, and I should probably write that a little better, liquid to go to solid. And this kind of makes sense. I mean, we're used to thinking about things, you know, if we squeeze harder on it, it's going to turn it into a solid. And so this very much fits with our intuition, but that fits with our intuition because most substances are like this. But what if we have the opposite case? So let me draw the opposite case over here. And so this is the case with water. So now, in this case, my solid liquid coexistence curve has a negative slope. And that means that, uh, and I should indicate that solid is over on this side, solid, and liquid is over on this side. So this means that if I'm starting down here and I'm increasing the pressure, what happens? Well now, if I increase the pressure, I'm going to go from a solid to a liquid. And that seems a little counterintuitive. If we squeeze down harder on something, it actually melts. Well, in part, this may help to explain why it's possible to skate on ice. Um, when we uh, put on very thin metal blades, those thin metal blades, when we uh, are putting our weight on those thin metal blades, they're exerting a lot of pressure in a very small area on the ice. And so it's possible that part of the uh, slickness that we get for skating on the ice comes from that pressing down and, uh, you know, allowing this to uh, form a small layer of fluid underneath the skate, which uh, makes it easier to skate by. I'm not going to promise that that's the explanation, but it sure would fit with the facts uh, of what happens when we squeeze down on, on uh, solid ice and it turns into liquid water.